Thank you, Mary, for that lovely New Year's carol. Would you join me in prayer? O oh God, you are the source of our life and the hope of our hearts. We are filled with wonder and we worship you. Every living cell of this universe is filled with your spirit. You amaze us. Our desire to know you and be with you is unending. We ask that you would open us to experience the challenge of your word. We are comforted by the images of the ancient prophet Jeremiah. Speak to our hearts of your calling us home. Speak to us this day, we pray. Amen. Not long ago, we finished the season of Advent. Advent, of course, is the time of waiting. And we waited to get back together, didn't we? So that's the blessing of that season, to format that sense of waiting, how we longed to worship together, all the things that we have done historically in this congregation or others, the hanging of the greens, the children's pageants, the beauty of Christmas Eve, if it was here in the services or with people who do not attend services, we just waited to be back together, I know. But the arrival of more and more of the vaccines tells us that we're starting on a new leg of our COVID journey. Our COVID journey. And in that journey, for all its pain, there have been some deep reminders that God is with us our church, this community, the people who for years have worked in the health care, our global partners who have cared for the sick and the impoverished around the earth. There is hope when we remind ourselves of that interconnectedness. Part of that interconnectedness for me has been colleagues sharing resources. I was inspired by a blog from Bowmanville, Ontario, for Inniskillen and Tyrone United Churches. And the blog was written by their minister, Jeff Doucette. But it was a letter that he imagined the buildings of those congregations, what the buildings might write. And so I have been inspired by Jeff's creativity, and I want to read you a letter this morning from the Sanctuary and Buildings of First Metropolitan. So here in the weeks of Advent, I, the building, I've watched you light candles, and with, an e with each new flame, I was reminded of how much I want peace for all congregations and the gift of hope for all our mission partners, like the buildings at our place and the therapeutic recovery community and the candle of joy joy, hearing people laugh as they walk down Balmoral or Quadra. On the fourth Sunday, you lit the candle of love here in the sanctuary to be added to the service. And I heard those words the families spoke as they lit candles in their own homes at Misha's invitation. I realized just how much I, although I am a building, I love you and how much I miss you. It's been over nine months since we've been together. I know that I am just a building and that the real church is in you, but I miss you. I know it may be a few months yet before we get together again. It is safer that way. But let me share a few reasons why I miss you. And maybe it will help you until we can come together again. That building supervisor guy, Bruce, he's always way too early for church on Sundays. Before the pandemic and even today, he comes in the door and right away he puts on the lights. And then because Sheila will be looking for it, Bruce puts on the coffee. I know how we used to get the fellowship hall ready once a month, 
Janet Gray and Kathy McMillan would serve up soup with a whole crew of hospitality people making lunch such a great social time. Anyway, Bruce putters away, getting the leaves blown off the paths, the steps swept, and everything ready in the sanctuary, too. Then he waits and listens out, the corner, the, out of the corner of his ear like someone waiting for a beloved friend or family member coming to visit. And it seems that you were really cared for. During the summer, as well, Bruce works with Walid, Edgardo, and Muhammad. But long before Sheila arrives, wanting to check the flowers and choose the right stole, coffee in an insulated cup is already on the pulpit. She teases Bruce, and then sometimes Larry comes around to do the flowers. That's the Reverend Larry Scott, Bullwinkle's dad. He is the gardener that makes the North Park community smile at the Quadra Street Garden and the borders on the Balmoral Street parking lot. I am so glad he still comes to the building during the pandemic. Working outside with the mask is safe, and the flowers are even more important now. I still see Larry a bit and Emily McDonald in the sanctuary, but I used to see her a lot and the groups she helps, the classes Wally and Sharon organized. Oh, the programs they had here in the building, varied and helpful. I remember hearing people people I'd never seen before, saying how helpful they were. On Sundays, I hear the echoes of Kelly, your music director, arriving. And I remember hearing the members of the choir come in. Our musicians are arriving in time for a practice up in the social suite as they get their gowns out. And before long, I hear you laughing and clearing your throats and practicing songs to lead the good people who come. I miss the music, the songs that bring tears and a lump in the throat, the th songs that make you clap and bang on the back of a pew or tap your foot. I especially raise the songs that rise the peaks and ri raise the roof. Oh, how you people love to sing together. Before worship, Leanne Clark would be signing checks that Katja had left her. Katja and Fiona were here all week before the pandemic. I miss that a lot. Every Monday, Fiona and Shirley Chatfield would talk on the phone. I loved hearing Fiona's laughter. Actually, I miss the sounds of when you arrive and how you greet each other during the week. And then on Sunday, the sign of you as you get into a chair or a pew, the hugs you would give, the words you would exchange the stories whispered of your comforts and your joys, the news of your family and friends that have moved away. I miss the sounds of the kids arriving in the CE wing, or even the ones who would get candies or a treat from someone who was just waiting for them to arrive. I miss the sounds of children's time with all the kids at the front and then trailing down the hall to the Sunday school room to do crafts and to learn about Jesus. But I especially miss how the children got to be at the front of the line in the fellowship hall when you were having lunch. I miss the noise that you would make getting up and sitting down every time it was time to sing or when it was time to move over because someone else had arrived. I also miss, although I'm just a building, it made me smile when you might have nodded off during one of Sheila's sermons, and then the look of trying to pretend that you weren't actually asleep but deeply thinking. I saw that. I miss the sound and the lineups of you during communion, that movement from the back to the front of the church, and then sitting quietly in the pause, eating and drinking the same morning, non-gluten-free and regular breads. I used to see Margaret Macquarie and Arlene Anderson doing the flowers and Joan Nicholson making sure they were nice for the chapel service. I sure miss those 9 a.m. people. I miss the chats I could hear at the sound desk with Trison, volunteers like Jim Anderson, 
Joan Mason, Stephen Gray, and John Newhouse, and then our co-op student, Ryan. And although I'm not allowed to say it, I heard them talk about the sermons. I miss the sound of you all heading up to the fellowship hall and then out to your cars in the parking lot, catching up with each other. I loved hearing those conversations. You didn't leave quickly. You dragged out the goodbyes with your coats already on. You linger together in fellowship. Who would have known on March 15th what was about to happen in our lives? Remember, you had Robert Massoud here about the message about the Palestinians, and he was selling olive oil as a fundraiser. I miss all that. And I miss the things that didn't happen on Sunday, like upstairs in the Healing Touch Room, as people were welcomed from our area as much as from this congregation. Yeah, and the celebrations of life when such crucial support is offered and faith is strengthened. That faith has sustained this old building, I tell you, for a long, long time. But I know we needed to stand apart when our hearts wanted to be here with me together. I miss the Emerging Artist Sale, the CBC Christmas reading for our place, and oh, I miss all the special music, the concerts year-round. And then last year we had barbecues on the summer lawn. I even miss sounds of meetings, who would ever think that? But the sharing of ideas, the laments, the concerns, the looking forward. I miss seeing people working with Ross and Jan about what's going to happen to me, your building. I missed Easter the way it used to be, and I missed Christmas. I miss the oohs and ahs of people hearing the full choir with their anthems. But I look out the window and I see the presents you have given outdoors on your steps. I loved the gift of flowers for the neighborhood several times this year, Mother's Day and Thanksgiving, with little notes from the children in the Sunday school. I miss hearing Megami and Misha with the children planning things during the week. But on our Quadra Street sign, you have been in communication with the whole city. Salutes and encouragement to frontline workers, the fallen on Remembrance Day, the reminders that domestic violence is never okay, and a lot of information about what's online, and even a smile or two. And in Advent, out front, I feel like you have hugged me with a warm blanket of hope, peace, joy, and love. You have helped people remember that you are present to them, even though we are empty. And that is the hardest part, isn't it? Whether it's speaking as a building or as a member of this congregation, we've all missed the usual Advent and Christmas celebrations. But the candle that we light, the Christ candle, tells us that we will do these things again. And even though I stand here and I may seem empty, I am not. I am full of echoes of moments past and the promise of things yet to come, just as we heard the prophet Jeremiah speak this morning. I hear stories as people pass by of how you are a church during this pandemic. You have carried your faith out into the streets, and I hear how you are taking care of those you know and those you don't. I am a place to gather, yes, but my, how proud I am to be carrying the church at first and metropolitan in new, different ways now. I know that I miss you and you miss me. But these things are not gone. These memories are strong and our hope for the future carries us. We will be here together again in 2021 when it is safe. And so we keep heart. And as a building you have cherished and maintained and looked after for more than 100 years, I trust you 
to continue to do that into the future. For those who have not been here since March 15th, I know that your seat will be here when you come back. I know that you love being connected in other ways until we can be here together. I am a building, but the church, its memories and its future is you in the people. But I know we will make more memories in that future. I am sure of that. And although I am just a building, you are my church family and have been for generations. And as much as I miss you, I love you. I thank you from this, the Heritage Building at Balmoral and Quadra, your first met. Amen.